I've had to come through to a different room to film the start of this video because I've got a nice clear bench here and this thing is really huge. It doesn't really fit under the camera over that well, but I'm going to take the lid off and then we can take a look inside. So this is an industrial ozone generator for sanitizing the hotel bedrooms and things like that. And you've it's making a noise at the moment because it's got the timers running in the background, but you can turn it to on, off, or you can then set a timer. And I've already had this right up to the top. And now it's going to make loud purring ticking noises for the full duration of the video. But that's just how it's happened. But the idea is that if you're wanting to sanitize a room, you can set it for, say, 20 minutes. You can leave the room, come back about half an hour later, and it will have sanitized the room with ozone for 20 minutes, turned itself off, and hopefully by then some of the ozone will have dissipated because it's quite an irritating level of gas it puts out. So let's take the lid off and take a look inside. The lid is off, but before we go inside, let's take a look at the theory behind this because it will make it so much more obvious when you see what's inside it. So we start off with a transformer with the AC in, it has to be AC in, in the traditional uh, 50, 60 hertz units, uh, but ultimately the, some of the modern units use high frequency power supplies, so it's not that critical. But anyway, mains are low voltage DC in to be converted up, and you have a high voltage transformer, the output has to be AC, two electrodes, and then an insulating layer between them, a dielectric layer, which in the case of this unit is either glass or quartz. If you were just to have the electrodes without that insulating layer, all that would happen is you'd get a spark would jump between them, and it would still it would generate some ozone, but it would also generate a lot of heat and noise and unpleasantness. So what they do is, for efficiency, they have this insulating layer. In this case, it's ceramic, but it could also be glass, quartz, or... Uh, mica is sometimes used and that stops el electricity jumping straight across. So what happens instead is that as on each half of the main cycle the charge transfers backwards and forwards and you end up with tiny little sparks a huge peppering mass of them that creates this corona discharge which manifests as a purple glow. I'll try and show you that purple glow later on if the camera can pick it up. And typically when a oxygen molecule which is two atoms of oxygen passes through that, it often gets split into separate oxygen uh, atoms. And that's not a, a sort of stable situation. The oxygen in its most stable form is two of these atoms joined together. So what you sometimes get is three atoms of oxygen joined together. So this is O2, which is oxygen. This is O3, which is ozone. And you also get uh, just individual oxygen atoms. And the nature of an oxygen atom is it wants to bond onto anything that it can bond onto, as uh, ozone does that as well. Ozone wants to get rid of that third oxygen atom because it's not a stable uh, molecule. It wants to get back to being O2 again. So anytime it comes up against... Uh, another atom of material, another molecule, it will actually th throw that uh, oxygen atom off, it will attach onto that and it will oxidise it. And this manifests itself as a sort of a sterilising effect, a bleaching smell. It's really, when you first smell ozone, and ozone, ozone is actually based on a Greek word for smell, because it is very distinctive. When you first smell it, it's actually quite nice. It smells fresh and bleachy and clean, which is why a lot of uh, home uh, sort of air sanitising products use it. And uh, you also get these units in uh, toilet facilities that mount on the wall and they just put out a small whiff of the ozone. They just cycloned off and uh, just uh, put out a level of ozone that is just barely enough not to be detectable, but gets rid of the smells. If you can smell ozone, there's too much. Um, I say I used to really like the smell of ozone, but uh, after you've been exposed to it for quite a length of time, you suddenly think, ugh, it's not very nice at all, actually. It gets it gets tiring very quickly. So the materials for the insulator are glass, ceramic, and mica. And the electrode materials, in this case this is a ceramic one, the electrode materials have to be resistant to the ozone, so it's often stainless steel. I'm not sure what these ones use, because it's almost like a printed material, it's almost like a printed alloy on it. Um, and in this case, uh, another advantage of uh, the ceramic is because the dielectric strength of ceramic is so high, you can make it very thin. It means you don't need as high a voltage to create the same amount of uh, corona discharge and therefore the amount of ozone. 
And in this case, these very common ceramic electrodes available on eBay, this one has a fairly large area at the back of solid area, and then it's got the fingers, and the corona discharge will appear on this side. The little slots in the back are purely underneath these fingers because by minimizing the actual amount of area that overlaps, they minimize the capacitive effect and did the sort of coupling that won't actually produce the uh, corona. Uh, in the case of the unit we're going to take a look inside, it's actually a circular tube of glass and it's inside it's got a conductive coating painted in the inside and then it's got a wire wrapped around the outside. Other means of producing it are a mesh wrapped around the outside, a, a metal stainless steel mesh that's welded together and then just slipped on or even just a loose scroll. And the other approach is to get a sheet of glass and just put a square of mesh on one side or both sides and that's a really efficient way of getting a large area for the corona discharge to appear. But let's take a look inside the unit and see how this one works. So here's the unit, we're ticking away because it's got a little timer that uh, just keeps ticking. Here's the wire wrapped around the outside and then the inside, if I stick my finger in here, it's a sort of coarse feeling coating. It's a very rough conductive coating. And they don't have to be too concerned about the inner coating because uh, being resistant to ozone because not much ozone, if any, will be generated in the back because it's a solid surface. They've coated the inside the glass because that's the best way to get a really close contact to the glass uh, or quartz, as it may be. And the important bit here is this wire that's wrapped around, which is probably stainless steel to resist the ozone uh, damage, the oxidation effect. And it's just wrapped around and the difference, the areas between it and the uh, material at the back will create this sort of corona uh, haze around it that the oxygen then passes across, gets uh, split apart. There's a fan over here that draws air in from outside. It won't, uh, they won't uh, make it so it pulls in from the opposite direction through the fan because that would damage the fan very quickly with the level of uh, ozone going through it. It would oxidise it and damage it very quickly. So to protect the fan, the air comes in through the fan passes over this tube and through the tube, uh, which doesn't really matter, there's not much corona inside, but it helps probably keep it cool. And then it passes through this vent at the other side, which is just a simple vent. The power supply is a dedicated electronic transformer and it's got a capacitor in series with it. I'm not sure if that's part of the operation because some of these um, rely on charge a capacitor on each half of the cycle and then discharge it with a triac inside through a coil just to uh, basically excite a sort of, sort of almost like a Tesla coil or an Audin coil type arrangement just to create oscillation and uh, generate the high voltage output. Uh, or it might just be uh, to adjust it to different uh, supply voltages. But that output then is applied to the inner coating by this wire here and the outer wire electrode. Now when I got this, it was faulty. Uh, I got it at a good price from eBay because it was faulty. They said, works but creates a lot of noise. In reality, it didn't work very well. It certainly, it produced some ozone. But what had happened, this wire here had detached. I don't know if it actually, the ozone had actually corroded the connection and made it fall apart. But uh, it had detached and uh, burnt. The evidence had been destroyed in the process, the burning. So I had to cut that back to get to fresh material and then sewed it onto a tab and just re-terminate it onto that. At this end of the unit is a little timer. That's a sort of time switch that uh, lets you either turn it on manually, just a little cam there. I don't know if you can actually see that operating the little cam there, uh, or the time mechanism. And that's more or less it. There's an insulating layer at the bottom, mainly because this these this metalwork here actually becomes live. It's one of the connections underneath here, and it's quite flimsy. But that's uh, I think is this stainless steel or is this? I think this is stainless steel. Just this metal strip with a kind of rubber washer. Is it just to grip that without squeezing the tube too tightly enough to break it? Um, and that's more or less it. So I'm going to turn this on now. I'm going to move it back to the middle of the picture here. I'm going to take the exposure off. Uh, then I'm going to power this up. And we're going to see if we can see the corona discharge. So uh, let's turn, set the timer. That's it running. And I'll turn this light off. Can we see the corona discharge? It's kind of very faint. 
you can just barely see it there as a dull purple glow. Now my eyes are adjusting, I can actually see it better, but uh, the camera is doing a pretty good job actually picking it up. So that's the Corona Discharge, that's a showers of tiny, tiny little sparks that the air is passing through and getting split apart into the separate oxygen molecules. And that is fundamentally how ozone is generated in most of these units. The air passes through that, gets split, goes out the front of the unit and then sterilises the room. Oh, incidentally, I, sh I should mention, if some of you are getting deja vu, it's because I already had a look inside this unit, but I did it while I was back at my old flat in Glasgow, uh, where, where this unit used to reside. And I decided to film it late at night and couldn't fit it under the camera easily, so I went out into the stairwell, and the stairwell was this big, echoey stairwell. And it was quite late at night, and I didn't want to disturb the neighbours, so I was whispering. So I was like whispering about how this worked and all you could hear was this boomy echo at real low volume. It was just very weird. That video is still online somewhere on the channel. But uh, this is a much better version because uh, you can actually hear what I'm saying now and it's a much more detailed version of the video. So that's how these ozone generators work.